Hello, everybody. All right, so there we go. So, Rick, how is your day going today? Uh, pretty good, pretty good, for sure. Uh, and yours? Uh, yeah, well, it's been, uh, it was uh, pretty deadly, quiet. But, uh, good, good Friday. Friday. <laughs> pretty busy, but pretty much got um, a lot of stuff I was trying to get out of the way, out of the way, so um yeah so um That's good. of course for those in the chat if you guys haven't already if you guys can like and share the screen see if we can get some more friendly people in here to engage that'd be appreciated also if anything we talk about tonight grabs your attention feel free to um feel free to comment and or ask questions we'll try to answer the questions to the best of our ability now, of course um before i talk about what's on tap for tonight Rick, would you like to do an intro? Maybe, you know, talk a little bit about any projects you're doing, share any links. You know the, you know the shtick, right? Well, um, uh, okay. yeah, I do, I do. Of course, I am Rick Piper of Cross Comics, as my uh, ticker tape says. Um, I just today put up a video on my Pied Piper of Hamilton channel of me reacting, first time watching, reacting to alien resurrection so um, people want to go over there and check that out it'd be greatly appreciated and then and of I course um, that, that's the link right there right that's the link right there yeah for it. and then of course i yes it is and then of course this i also put up a new uh video for possible music and i'm just waiting for my creator <laughs> to my YouTube creator to come up so I can grab the link for that. Uh, uh, put it in the chat. And that's just another music video. Actually, it's probably going to be the last one for Snow for a while because uh, uh, I don't think I got any more. I'll have to check. Uh, but, you know, hey. All right. I have to it looks like you might have changed where, change where you have your computer in the room or something like that. It looks like your room looks a little different there than before. Uh, I just where I have I put the camera. Normally I used to put it like right here, hmm. like right about down this way in this area on the table. Mm -hmm. But I attached it to the top of the TV, so now it's sort of looking down on me a little bit, okay. and it ends up okay, you know, it ends up being able to get more of the room. I saw the bed room. I don't think I saw the bed behind you before. Yeah, it, it, it was there, but you didn't see the whole bed, so it uh. you know you just stable with where I put the camera. You're able to see it better. Like, it gave you more of a wider shot, shot, basically. Yeah, like before. It gave you it more like of a wider like shot, that. or more of an aerial shot, right? Yeah, before it was more like this, as you can see, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can technically see the bed, mm -hmm. but it's a little harder to see because of the ticker tape and all that. But all I right. figured it being up here um, is a little bit better because uh, mm -hmm. uh, especially you know and I thought about this for when I was doing my review uh, watch review thing to where I can put it on the whatchamacallit you know the screen mm -hmm. you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, it's all good, you know. So people now can see my my bed a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. All yeah, right. Sure. Well, actually, Rick, why don't you talk to the folks for a moment? Because I do have to, I do have to step away from the computer for a quick moment. I'll be right back. But if you want to talk to everybody for a moment, you know, 
anybody and everybody who might be in the chat. I'll be yeah. right back. And then, and then when I come back, we'll get into like what we're what we're here for tonight, which is the comics. All right, I'll be right back. So hello, everybody who's here and not here and watching later. I'm glad to have you all here. I hope you're doing all good. Uh, we don't see anybody in the chat the, at this time besides myself. So um, I guess I'm talking to myself, which, you know, isn't new. Um, the only problem is when you answer yourself. But then again, usually you do end up answering yourself because you're the only one talking. And you're just bouncing ideas or whatever off yourself. And you're saying them aloud so, you know, you get the concept a bit better. There's something about when you voice something that you hear it, you know, because, you know, as we know, some things sound great in our head, but then when we speak them, well, boy, they sound rotten. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And um, so I guess I'll ask, how is everybody's good Friday been? Mine was... Um, you know, it was just another day, unfortunately. Um, you just, the thing is, you can't go do anything. Not really too many shops are open, you know, like variety stores are, but convenience stores are about the only thing open. Maybe a couple restaurants. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. And uh, this is my first Good Friday with what my mom uh, although we never really did much without on Good Friday, the odd time we'd go to church. Uh, but I don't think we're in this area that there was. Well, there probably was. I could have found one if I wanted to a service for Good Friday. But I didn't. Yeah. I was actually just reminded today that actually Easter is this Sunday. I was thinking it might have been next Sunday, but I was just reminded that it's actually this Sunday. So. <laughs> Um, oh, that, and, and that's why I asked you last Sunday, are you doing this Sunday coming up? Because it was Easter. Yeah. Well, I'm still going to do something, obviously, but um, yeah. depending upon, you know, who I can get to come, you know, I will, you know, um, the only holidays right. I've been taking, the only holidays I've been taking off are like Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, um Yeah. The only way that um, you know I won't be here is somehow I get invited for dinner or whatever, you know, somewhere. Yeah. If somebody right. should, should feel sorry for me because I'm all by myself. All right, so um, all right, so now now we're 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 just past eight. We're coming up on eight and a half minutes, so might as well. Um, hey, hey Tim. Tim's here. Uh, what up, not everyone? Much not yourself. much, Tim. Just chatting a bit before we get going into the into the material here. So tonight, of course, we're going to focus in. We're still working our way through February of 1940. We're going to be focusing in on comics that went on sale from Dell Comics at the time um, from February 1940. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on um, one of the books from the Four Color series. That, that, that was kind of an anthology series where they feature a different feature every every month and just give the whole book to a particular feature this uh this month for this particular month it was um smiling jack with a bunch of reprints from that and then we're also gonna take a look at some stuff from popular comics volume one issue 50 go through that book a little bit um noise from jim there so yeah. with so with that, um, and Rick, you get are you feel like doing voices, uh, do, you know, doing leads and voices oh. and all that? Oh yeah, of course. All right. So with that, let me go ahead and pull up the stuff here. Let's see. Okay. And first off, we're gonna start with the four the four color one because that that's basically just all one. <laughs> feature basically so let's see uh does it only have four colors in it or does it have more i think it has more i don't know why they called it four four color all i know is that it was a 
anthology type book, basically. Uh. Uh, Smiling Jack, there it is, right there. Is he smiling? He doesn't look like all in color. He does not look like he's smiling there. At least not the guy in the green. Yeah, well, I guess we'll find out what's all going on here. It's I'm a stamp collector. Stamp collecting was pretty big back in those days. Yeah. Well, there wasn't a lot to do, so. Smiling Jack by Zach Mosley. All right. Um, I'll be Jack. Jack's the guy in the middle, I believe. You you want to do the other other two guys, the guy in the green and the kid? Sure. We're dependent on you to win this transcontinental speed dash for us, Jack. You can trust me, boss. Just just watch just watch my final test. Can I go too? Hello, rat. This is Matt. Come to my hangar at once. I just clocked Jack Speed, and my plane hasn't a chance to win, uh, to win the twenty thousand dollars. And uh, Timothy says, "What, Jack?" <laughs> What Jack? Smiling Jack. <laughs> uh, these, I guess, are reprints of, of collections that were um, of news, newspaper reprints. They were, I guess, it was a feature in the newspapers, I guess. And these are just reprints. The name's Smiling Jack. Oh, I remember it from somewhere, but I think there's more to what I remember of the name Smiling Jack something. Yeah. It's still a secret about us being uh, twins, right? And having planes alike. You want to do... Ah, I get you back. Uh, uh, Sister Act again, eh? You leave tonight for the old deserted field? In New Jersey. And. I'll put. Your numbers on. My plane and leave San Francisco. With the other. Racers. And then hide. Out at. Our Death Valley Ranch. Good. I'll keep track. A uh, track of the race. My radio. Um and leave Jersey so I'll land at New York just ahead of Jack. So these guys are finding uh, some chicanery here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Timothy says, crying, Tom. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. So are they homosexuals? No, they are uh, twins. Identical twin brothers, it looks like. And whole mm -hmm. sister act. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it means. It's probably some sort of terminology from the day. Of course, we do remember the, well, I remember I saw the movie, or two movies technically, yeah. called Sister Act with uh, Whoopi Goldberg. So yeah. I'm not quite sure what the Whoopi team. Whoopi Goldberg, one of, the, one of the loudest liberals in media right now. <laughs> She's the lead, lead, lead person on The View. Yeah, one of you. Yeah. Uh, Timothy says, Smiling Jack, crying Tom. It is a joke. Oh, okay. All right. Say, say, what about your black eye, Jack? We'll, well, remember it. Jack will remember it and get wise. I'm not you. Gee, that's right. 
I hate to do this, brother, but business is business. Oh, actually, I think that's supposed to be me doing that in this case because oh uh, yeah, I hate to do this, brother, but business is business. Boom. Uh, Timothy's like, they are two dudes, so why would it be a sister act? I don't know. Again, it probably has something to do with some sort of terminology back in the day. I don't. I don't, know, I don't even know where you where you got sister act from. I don't even know where you got. Doesn't say anything it, in the thing. It, on sister. the previous page, it does say sister act. Yeah. Uh, well, I just went back yeah, to the previous it, page. Uh, let's see. Uh, go down. Maybe. This uh, a secret. Uh, okay, go up a bit, or maybe it's on the. I don't think third panel. Oh, said, I, so. oh our shit. Okay, that that's. I see it now. I I got you back. Okay, that's where it was. But then again, it might have just it might have just been it might have just been a terminology for like. Um, for like when twins try to fool people, maybe that's just how it is. Because obviously there there are two guys there, and um, but it might it might have just been the terminology they were just using for like the i for like a classic old twins trick, right? Where you have tw where you have twins, and like um, like for example, the Bella twins would do do something called twin magic, where it's like they'd substitute one for the other because they were like twins, right? I think that might be, um, yeah. Uh, it's something here says uh, I looked it up quick. It says sister act, a variety act uh, by two or more sisters, is from Vaudeville, 1908 English. Uh, that doesn't really air. Yeah, but again, um, and then again, it could just be an editorial error too. They just <laughs> could be. It could just be that maybe nobody caught that back then. You know that. Oh, wait a sec, aren't these guys? And you know, but yet they're saying sister. It could be that too. You know, obviously we can't resurrect these guys from the dead to ask them why they they put it that way. But you know. Ah, rebel hello, rebellious pastry. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I can't. Hello, rebellious. The keyword is sisters. Yeah. Um, maybe they're just using it as a euphemism, you know, because you know, I don't know what that vaudeville act what was, but maybe they're talking about something similar to that. You know, this is 1908. You know, um, 20. You know about 30 years difference so you know they could have uh easily came up watching that uh whole vaudeville thing so hmm. all right uh Tim, a different uh slash panel oh okay He's a bit honored. All right, so high pastry, and then Tim saying, funny seeing you here. Okay, I guess in a different, being on a different panel. Are you on a different panel? It is a panel on Earth. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyways, um, getting ready to move on here. Um, hmm. All right. So I think you you're you're a rat here. I, originally, I started out as rat, but then we switched because of what was going on in those <laughs> channels. So you're rat. Yeah. Here we now. Okay. We didn't exactly figure. Because they're just the same, look the same. It was hard to tell which one was which, it, which is sort of the point, right? 
no one knows that uh, Bat and I are twins and have identical planes. This black eye is just like bats do. What a beaut. Hmm. I'll start the I'll start with the racers here in California and Bat, who's hiding in New Jersey, will take off in time to reach New York first. It's a cinch. If you think that ox cart of yours can beat my bullet, Jack, you, your brain must be, must have a low ceiling. And that that's what you that's what you think. Can I go too, Jack? <laughs> Kid still wants to turn and go. <laughs> Take off. Sure, nice of you to let me come along, Jack. I'll help all I can. That's okay, Pin Feathers. Uh, we're already leading the race. Not another plane in sight. The heck there ain't, isn't. There's a plane right behind us. I see his wingtip. Wing, wingtip? Wingtip my eye. That's the tail of our of our own ship. <laughs> a big help you're, you're going to be. <laughs> So the kid can't even tell the difference between a, a tail and a and a wing. <laughs> yeah. Uh Timothy's like, how dare you point out Jack's disability? Uh Rebellious says, I was over on Sci-Fi Nation's channel. Uh, I thought you might have been. Um Timothy's like, low ceiling brain is a serious matter. And he's at Rebellious Pastry. Awesome. He brought down Finity. It was glorious. Hmm. All right, so continuing on here, let's see. Kansas City, my eye, that's Oklahoma City. How did I ever get so far off my course? <laughs> Hey, what what's a hanging by my compass? That's my metal rabbit foot. I hung it there for good luck. What? That metal is what threw uh, threw our compass off. If we if we lose this transcontinental race, I'll tear you wing from wing. I'm sorry. I promise I won't cause us to lose any more time. Everybody says that's true, and Tim says he also has trouble reading maps. Poor Jack. And then he says Jack throws the kid out of the plane. Oh, I think the kid's speaking oh. first here. Yeah, Jack, look, a plane has crashed. What? Where? Race or no, or no race. We gotta land. Maybe they're still alive. Prices have crashed above at the Bob Eaton store. Trade with us, save money. <laughs> Is the pilot hurt? Uh, Is the pilot Ooh. hurt? Everybody says Lorenzo did a stream about the death of Captain's Channel. And Rebellious says, uh, Timothy says to Rebellious, also glorious. Hmm. All right, so let's see. Smile, look, look at the plane right there, Rick. Smiling Jack Flash. Yeah. We just passed Dayton, Pin Feathers. We we can still win even if you did get us off off the course. Hmm. 
Small and Jack reported leading transcontinental race. That bullet hasn't been sighted. Ha <laughs> ha. No one, no one knows that rat, my twin, started in the race in a plane identical to mine. And that I'm hiding at this old abandoned town, town site where, here in New Jersey, waiting to take off for New York just in, the, just in time to win. Watch this. Flash! Jack, Jack, Smiling Jack sighted west of Philadelphia. Oh, boy. You're getting close to the finish line there, eh, Rick? Yeah. Um, so, uh, Tim said, Tim said Bob Eaton, Eaton the place where they ate Bob. Okay, I'm not sure what Tim's trying to say there. Rebellious says, but yeah, uh, I K about about this channel from uh, Lorenzo. Oh, cool. All right. This channel, as in Mike Waters, Walters. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Timothy says, what about Jumping Jack Flash? That's probably what I'm thinking about with uh, Smiling Jack, Jumping Jack Flash. It's Bobby, a gas well, well, here's another, Bob, it mentions Bob Eaton here, Bob Eaton, the place of where they ate Bob. Um Actually, there was a professional wrestler. He passed away, I think, last year, though. It was a wrestler named Beautiful Bobby Eaton, who was one half of the Midnight Express. Um, so, but yeah, um, it's a lot. This channel, um, uh, but yeah, I, I guess, ick about, <laughs> um, this channel from Lorenzo. Um, this channel, as in Mike Walters. Okay, well, thanks. Um, thanks, Lorenzo. Jumping Jack Flash. And then, yeah. It's a gas gas. And pastry, yes. All right. So, all right. So, we're caught up in all that. So, let's. Gosh. The wind it has changed. Now, I'll have to tear down these old signs and banners so I can take off. Now to cop that $20,000 prize. Yeah, that'd be a lot of money back then. That would be like almost a million dollar prize today. Maybe maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. I'm not sure offhand. The whole inflation thing. Yeah. It, um, it's a cinch. No, no one will ever know I've been hiding in New Jersey. Uh, I think they're gonna know. New Jersey, New Jersey real estate <laughs> lot, uh, lots for sale. <laughs> he kind of grabbed onto a a banner. It looks like. Yeah, and, and I don't even know how the it would have caught that because I don't think he would have put it in the way of where he had to take off. You know, you know that banner. You see him taking it down, mm -hmm. but you know it is what it is. And there's probably several ways that he could have, could explain that. Yeah, uh, I had to stop for fuel or something like that. You know. Yeah. At, um, at the at the start at the start of the transcontinental race, my twin took off in a plane identical to mine. While I was hiding in that abandoned Jersey town site. Now all I gotta do is dash over to New York ahead. Of the leading racer and win the shooting stars. Look, look, look what's hung on to my tail. Uh, and Timothy says, Rebellious, won't you help me make fun of this comic? Uh, some in style. <laughs> I'm, lo I'm losing precious time, but I gotta shake off. That sign is give our trick away, sure. Jack, I see the New York skyline. 
Oh, baby. And the, and the radio reports say we are in the lead. Look, Jack, a plane. It must have come out to escort us in. Escort my eye? That's Bat's bullet. Give her the gun, Jack. Pour, pour it on. That bullet wins by a cylinder. And uh, Timothy says, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, okay. And then he also said, he could tell people he has a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. Okay. Uh, I ha you're you're the guy in the green there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our plane was by far the fastest in the race. Why did you let us down? I've told you, boss. A metal a metal rabbit's foot threw my compass off. It um it's course. I know it sounds fishy, but I'll say it's fishy. You're washed up with us. Goodbye. But it's the truth. Uh, oh, he's saying he was from, because he is from New Jersey. Oh, okay. Look, Ma. It's my Jack, the famous aviator. Oh, mercy. Keep away from him. I hear he's a crook. You want to do these guys right yeah. here? Okay. You can tell me somebody didn't pay Jack heavy sugar to throw that rest. Yeah. Double crosser. Huh? Get it your face, Mom. <laughs> it's a stupidity. You can't talk about Jack like that. It's all my fault he lost. Oh, what is he paying you for an alibi for him? Jack, I'm awfully sorry I got you in this trouble. Ah, uh, forget it, kid. Gee, everyone is down on Jack, and it's all my fault, but nobody will believe me. Go on, pooch. Beat it as if I don't have enough trouble. I bring bad luck to everybody. And the dog just looking at him with a quimsical look. <laughs> uh, Jimmy says, look at that kid. It's so mad he heard it. Hmm. I, I'd like I'd like to give you a job, Jack, but you know the way people are talking. Sorry, that doesn't stop you from giving him a job. And just because the guy lo loses a race, that people think he's a crook and that he threw it. These people are idiots. Well, the thing is, mm. is that apparently, I mean, you saw in the one case there, somebody was accusing, you know, said that maybe somebody paid him to. To throw the race, and so yeah, yeah, but you know, just because he's being a crook, so of course nobody's going to want to hire him if he's got the reputation for being a crook. Yeah, true, true, but uh, just to give him that reputation because he loses one race, you know, because they think his plane's the best, all, all that in a box of chocolates, and that there's no way that he could have lost. Well, the, the things happen, you know. Maybe another guy was faster. 
you know, although you don't think so. But... Well, from what we know, because we are reading the story, of course, it, it wasn't his. It wasn't completely his fault. He still could have won the race. That um, had the um, had the yeah. Uh, had the other guys not cheated, he would have he would have won. But no matter whether he was straight off course or not, he was gonna lose. You know, you know. I wonder what they would have said if you know he came in in perfect time. You know, you know. It's just an, at this point, it's a, uh, it's you know the fact that he got taken off course. You know, it's just coincidence. Uh, and Timothy says uh, it was then the kid committed septitu septicu. Sep Maybe uh, septicu. Then. That's that's a form of Japanese ritual suicide. Yeah, and then Timothy says maybe they are from New Jersey. Uh, anyways, on with the story. This scrapbook I'm making ought to cheer Jack up if I clip off what. They say under his pictures. Yeah, sold out his friends. Jack Jack must have been paid plenty to throw the race. The rat. The rat. <laughs> Fishy alibi he gave. It's a present for you, Jack. All the pictures of the race. Thanks, kid. But I never want to hear of that race again. Gosh, I'm sorry. But say, Jack, there's something I'd like to know. It, can they put film films in cameras backwards? Why? Uh, cause at the start of the race, Bat's left eye is black, but in the picture where, in the picture taken when he's won, it's his right eye. Pin feathers, you've solved it. There's two bats. <laughs> two bats. <laughs> uh, and Timothy says he clips off negative articles about him. <laughs> what is with his pants? Does he wear a full diaper? I have no idea. Hmm. Jack's got a lot of nerve to smile after throwing that transcontinental race. The crooked. The crooked. <laughs> I'm sorry, the I have to do <laughs> yeah. I think you're the guy in the green. Aren't you from the one up here? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> um I hear I hear the own I hear the owners of the of Jack's plane suspect he was bought off by a rival airplane company. He yeah, Jack could easily have won. Won easy. He he had the fastest plane in the race. The rat. A double crosser like that should be tied to the tail of a transport and drug across the Rockies. My my wife says she'll wrap a a prop around my neck if I associate with him with him anymore. Look, look at how these people are reacting to this. For him, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, this is a little, a little yeah, a little ridiculous, over the top. The way these guys are reacting. Mm -hmm. I I always knew Jack was no good. Yeah, I, I bet he's saying that now, but I bet, I bet, I bet, you know, before he was right up top. Yeah, and they're all about to change the tune after what about to say. Hey, Jack, just prove that Mac has a twin that started in the race. Matt won by 
by being miles ahead in a sister ship. Jack just got $5,000 for his shares of the winnings. Oh, oh, you, you know, you know, you know, you know something. Going back to the whole sister act argument, there, you know, um, yeah, sister ship, because typically, typically, uh, it's usually used more in naval terminology, but you, you you hear it in other things too, like you know, you hear like sister ship, which is a ship that's like identical sister city. Sister plane sister. or yeah, sister, sister city, sister. right? Sister city, right? Yeah, could be. Maybe that. that's what they. Yeah, could be that. What they meant by sister act? Maybe not so much the guys themselves, but their planes. Right. Uh, Timothy says you normally have to pay double to have a prop tied to your neck. Laugh a lot. You did say pop prop, right? <laughs> That's what it said in the five thousand. Congratulations, Jack. You you can you can always count on, on him if you're if you need a friend, Jack, old chump. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, the, yeah, as you were saying before, um, Tim. You're okay in my logbook, Jack, old boy. Have a cigar, Jack. I'm proud to know you, a fellow like you, Jack, old pal. My wife, my wife said for you to have dinner with us. <laughs> <laughs> they did change their tune, didn't they? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Timothy says right. it was then Jack flipped everyone the bird. All right, I, I think we've read enough of the smiling because this whole book is just all smiling Jack. So um, yeah, yeah, and I, I think know, I think I that we're, story... wanna, we're, we're already forty two minutes into this, so we probably want to go get go get to the other other book we're going to look at tonight, which is yeah, uh, and I yeah, and I think that story is basically done. So you know, we read that one story. Why I'm suggesting we we go. Do something else, obviously. So now we're gonna look look at some of the stuff from Popular Comics Volume One, Issue Fifty from Dell. Um, it's kind of got half that. It's got some reprint. It's got some reprints, but it's also got some. Look, like it did have some original stories in it as well. Uh, so was this comic popular? <laughs> uh, well, I think it did have a pretty good run for a while. That was over 100. You 100 said 50, years. right? Well, we're at 50 now, but it, it um, but I think it had well, over I, 100 I, issues when, when it was. No, no, it was, no, I only said that because you went past the 50. <laughs> Well, I realized that, and as you notice, I came back to it there. <laughs> yeah. Popular Comics, 10 cents, April. Of course, the cover date's April, but it was a February on sale date. Gangbusters, based on Philip H. Lord's famous radio program, Mass Pilot, Wally Williams, Ace Brady, Hurricane Kids. Martin the Marvel Man. So I guess these are some of the newer features in the book, some of the um, premier features. But, um, new fast action book, Gangbusters, Donald Duck out of luck. Oh, wow. Uh, they, 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 they did. Know. John Carter of Mars for sale on the oh, wow. Yeah, Walt Disney is doing like two books through these guys, you know, Donald Duck and Pinocchio. Well, it's kind of funny. Dell Comics is what, you know, they made quite one of the things that they did quite a bit of, right? Was do comic adaptations of other licensed properties. And of course, when Dell kind of, um, when Dell, you know, kind of shut down and Gold Key took over. They continued that idea. They, they, you know, basically they would 
they would do comic adaptations of other IPs. You know, yeah, I, uh, I remember both doing the, uh, Star Trek. Yeah, I know, for example, in the 70s there, they they did a comic adaptation of Dark Shadow, the, the Dark Shadow series in the late 60s. Yeah, so. Um, Jim, if you notice, is the John Carter of Mars. And it's, it's uh, I probably knew it, but you know, also Donna, Donald Duck being that old and, you know, a big enough uh, attraction to get his, you know, own book, you know, which yeah. is pretty neat. And Pinocchio as well. Well, you have to also remember, too, I mean, one of the first sound cartoons, I think it was, you know, it had a long time been considered the first sound cartoon, but it was actually the second one with Steamboat Willie, which was um, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, which was yeah. back in 1928. So, 12 years after that fact. So, anyways. Yeah. So, so, yeah, gang, let's start out with gangbusters here. Let's see how we do it. And let's hello, go. Elk. Elk uh, of no, Annie. No, uh, we are not reading John Carter. It was just an advertisement in the front of the book for John Carter. I don't think we'll be reading. I don't think John Carter. Not, you know, he's not featured in this particular book. No. Um. Oh, oops! Did not was not trying to do that. <laughs> Anyways, Gangbusters, based on Philip H. Lord's all famous uh, radio feature, the Buck Morgan case, the is the crime crime career of three youths, led by Buck Moran, or the Buck Morgan. Moran. Oh yeah, Moran. It was Buck yeah. Moran. I, I missed him. Age twenty-two. The ruthless, the ruthlessly robbed. They ruthlessly robbed and murdered the citizens of San Francisco. Buck entered his crime career at an early age, del uh, delivering bootleg liquor for the for the slum racketeers. Buck. His pal Frank, um, pal Frank, um, Earn, Earn uh, as Frank Earn, or uh, Frank Vern, um, discuss their plans. You you want you want to do Buck right there? Okay, I'll go to stir Frank, but fat first. I'll make this town open its eyes. All right. Um, before we continue on, I think I do need to make some lighting adjustments here. So I'll be right back. If you want to talk to the chat for a moment, Rick, yeah. while I you know, make these lighting adjustments, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, so how was everybody's Good Friday this uh, Good Friday? This is, as I was saying earlier, my first Good Friday without my mom. But, you know, Good Friday, except for going to some church services over the years, it's not been nothing special. You know, uh, of course, Easter has been always a little bit more special. Um, from when I was young, it was um, usually going to my grandparents uh, for dinner. And then uh, after they died, we didn't really do anything too special for Easter, you know, just church. And all that so uh i'm not sure how much i'm gonna feel like i'm missing her this weekend you know of course i've been feeling like i've been missing her all along but you know sometimes these uh holidays are hit a little extra hard but not to bring you guys down uh or reading a great comic but how is your guys it's easter weekend going uh this uh weekend so far how was your the first day of your Easter weekend, Good Friday. Um, what else can I say? Oh, if you haven't seen up in the chat earlier, I show uh, put a link to my other channel going uh, first time reacting to uh, thing. It was Alien Resurrections. I've done a first time reaction for several things, uh, but I'm just recently starting that back up. And then, of course... Uh, 
uh, I will also be writing, uh, I also put up a new video for possible music for Snowdrift today, which probably will be the last one for a while. Uh, I had like eight of them downloaded, and I'm not sure whether I made any more. I'm going to have to check on that. Uh, anyways, I'll wait until Easter Sunday to belatedly write my aunt, who I should have written last Christmas. Yeah, um, I'll wait till Sunday as well to call anybody or whatever and wish them a uh, happy Easter as well. And you know, like I'll call my dad Sunday, uh, probably before I get to church or I may call him after I'm done church. Um, probably call my cousin who I was staying with the same. I'm probably just write it on Facebook. Probably write it on Facebook before I even uh, leave for church on Sunday. Because um, walking there takes about, I don't know, 25 minutes, half an hour to walk there. So that, uh, you know, uh, which is good, you know. Uh, I probably could catch a bus around the, almost the time that I leave and get there a little sooner, but I like getting in a little bit of the X uh, I caught up on X-Men 97. I loved it. I still have fear for, of season two bringing in the anti-white racism, but I adore the three episodes so far. Yeah, yeah. Same here. I, I, I've watched all three, and I'm liking what they've done so far. Um, from what I know of the comics, I haven't read a lot of X-Men comics, at least from that day and age, but I'm liking what they've done so far. It seems like it's stayed true to the comics. And it seems like it's staying true to the series as well. All right. So, yeah, let's see. I'm waiting until Easter Sunday to belatedly write to my aunt, whom I should have written last Christmas. Um, I caught up on X Men '97. I loved it. Still, have fear of season two, bringing in the anti-white racism. But I adored the the episodes on so far. Yeah, well, the the thing with the X Men '97 series too, you were saying that the the stuff isn't going to get controversial until you get it. Like I know Yellow Flash has talked about this. A lot of times, these shows will start out okay, and then will degrade over time. You know what I mean? So you know, yeah, and, uh, they'll start out. They'll yeah. start out kind of give you kind of okay what you think you want, but then then they'll. Like just do a complete left turn or whatever, and just you know go right off the cliff. I want to uh, find yeah. time to watch at least part of the final season of X Men ninety or X Men ninety two, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, ninety two, ninety seven. Yeah, um, I think uh, if you can watch it all, it's good. Uh, I think the main one to connect it with, of course. Uh, the one that they're going is it's just the last episode, you know. You know, it's nice to go rewatch stuff like that, but I think you only need to really rewatch the last episode if you want it something to tie it into it. But anyways, we should get off with this. All right. So short shortly after this, this the two men meet again at the saloon. I, 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 got, I got the guns, Buck. Good. First, we'll toss down a few of these and then we'll show up. Now, now what, what, do you, what do you think in this particular case he means toss down a few of these? Um, possibly get them uh, to their... Uh, Subordinates, you know, people that on the street, you know, to use them. Uh, no, in this case, because they're in a saloon, um, 
the idea is toss down a few of these. It's usually a term oh, oh, oh. they talk about when they drink beer, right? When they drink alcohol. Yeah. Or yeah. Toss uh, down for, a few You've never heard that expression before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, I was thinking he was talking about the guns, you know, but when with what you say there, yeah, the booze. Yeah, it makes sense, more sense that he's talking about the booze toss <laughs> some of their, you know, shots down and all that. Yeah. At 8 p. At 8 p. Uh, then, Go ahead, Rick. I was just going to say, Elk says, yeah, definitely the man in the high castle went off the cliff lower and lower each season. Yeah. At, at 8 p.m., two armed bandits enter Paul Marcus, uh, enter Paul Marcus's store. Okay. Get him up. This is a stick up. I've 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 emptied I've emptied this till. Let's go. First, I'll take care of this old guy. I I think I might know the the big guy if I if I seen him if I seen him again. Good. Well, you'll come down to headquarters. One one um one hour later one hour later that police um the police receive another call. My my buck sedan has been stolen. The license is twelve C dash O six. After after stealing the car, Buck and Frank launch themselves in, into a series of armed holdups. They uh, then at eleven p.m. they enter um, they enter a pool room and ask um, for a for a packet. Oh, again, some editing needed here. They jam four and A together. You see that? Yeah, yeah. Or at, four and A should be separate there for a pack of cigarettes. Yes. Take this guy. Here's a couple for luck. Oh, Joe. Let let let's get going. As the bandits flee, a police a policeman. Um, commandeers a taxi and gives chase. The bandits open fire and soon outdistance the cab. A few hours later, the bandits hold up a little a little Italian. Come over here. Come on, hand over here. Why you? You you ain't. Um, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna get old Tony. The little Italian dies a few hours later um, in a city hospital. Meanwhile, at the airport, Chief John Winston and his two men are have arrived um, in reply to an urgent urgent call from San Francisco police. So this is the Golden Gate City. Yes. yes. Uh, you you want to go ahead and do that guy then? Yes. I hope we're not too late. Winston um, reports to the chief of police. We're uh, we're also following up every every tip, but nothing's turned up. Having le having less than nothing to go on, Winston and his aides cover some of the tough spots for clues. Keep your ears open, Tony. Mean meanwhile, Buck has returned to his home. He flashes a huge roll of bills. 
Where'd you get that dough, uh, Buck? You ain't. Shut, shut up. Never mind. Never mind where I got this roll. If you're open, you're a trap. I'll kill you all. Let's see. Two, day, two days later, Buck meets a friend. Mike Bates, af after a day of drinking. They plan a night of horror. They hail a cab. Now can I read the, ta the taxi stops? Oh, oh. I, oh, I didn't even see that. The, the taxi stops in a lonely spot. <laughs> I'm wondering why you weren't. Okay, bud. <laughs> okay, bud. Hand over your cap and coat. But after killing the cabbie, the two drive away. Feels like old times. I used to drive a hat. A policeman finds the body of the cabbie. Gosh, he's dead. Here, com here comes a car. Perhaps he can give me a hand. The answer is a hail of bullets. <laughs> that was supposed to be sometime later. No. <laughs> that cab's still around the murder scene. That guy's just asking to get caught. All right. <laughs> now I'm getting. Now we're getting. It's it's funny. I had the sun came in bright, so I took down the towels. I had turned on the light, but then it still seemed bright. But now it's getting dim again. So I, I got to make some lighting adjustments. So you want to talk to the people while I'm doing that, Rick? Yeah, I'll be right yeah, back. I can do that. Okay, so uh, what was I saying before? I don't remember. But, yeah. Uh, hopefully, you know, all the talk that we've heard, they don't go uh, forward with. Um, as much as you know, uh, you know, because we don't want them to ruin it. And of course, there's you know rumors that you know Spider-Man might get the same treatment. Uh, hopefully, they don't ruin that. You know, right now they haven't ruined anything with X-Men uh, '97. But you they know, just well, they've only shot, they've only premiered three episodes, so it's like. Um, yeah, I know there was some talks that they're adapting the trial of Magneto um, story arc from the comics. Yeah, um, they did that already. That to actually poke at uh, MAGA with that. Yeah, they did. They did that, and the guy wanted to. He he might have intended to that. I don't think anybody watching it with a half a brain would have come to that conclusion, oh, I, I'm sure that, because I know who's writing it, that I thought that for a second. But, you know, ultimately my thought was, uh, this more seems like the left. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I did find out, find out something else, too, because I, I was curious at why some of the, you know, like, like Catherine Disher, Ron Rubin, um, even Chris Potter to a lesser degree, why some of them were their roles from from earlier and apparently it's gotten to the point like because Catherine Disher was the one who voiced Dean Gray back in the 90s okay yeah Ron Rubin was the one who voiced Morph back in the and back in the 90s and um Chris Potter was the guy who 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 voiced um Gambit back in the 90s one of the reasons they yeah. said now now one of the reasons that they all got they're still with the show and they're still doing other like um the case of Ron Rubin, he's doing the voice of President Kelly in the X Men '97 series. The reason they claim that they that they all didn't or were not reprising the roles is because they feel that in the like in like the basically the last 27 years since they last did the show, um, the voices were just changed too much to where they can't really do the voices anymore. You know. Uh -huh. uh, even that though makes sense. Alluding to the fact oh, that you can hear that in, in Cal Dodd's voice too, as he's trying to still portray um Wolver Wolverine. Wolverine. Um, 
I did. Yeah, I also, tell his history. Yeah. I also did find out that um, the two actors, because I knew two of the actors had died. I just um, the two actors who had died since since the show's ending were Norm Spencer, who who was the first voice of who was the voice of Cyclops back in the nineties, and David Amblin, who was the voice of Magneto back in the nineties. Those two actually have died. Cedric Smith, however, is still alive. Cedric Smith is the guy who did Charles Xavier, but. Of course. Yeah, uh, yeah Xavier, Xavier hasn't been in it much. Um, Cyclops, the guy that's doing it is doing a good job. I didn't realize it was a different guy. And Magneto, uh, I'm not sure whether I thought it was a different guy or not. I don't think so. Anyways, Elk says, yeah, the right, whatever the writer's intentions, anti magnet co content won't be very widely perceived. I don't think interpretation includes both author and viewer. True. Sometimes it doesn't. A lot of times it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, let's try and get this story done. <laughs> yeah, Winston, I'm glad I'm glad you're back. There's a new crime wave. Get in the car. Well, well what are what we, we waiting for? for? All right. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Follow that cab. Winston is close. Uh, is close upon the bandits. When suddenly the the fleeing cab crashes, Buck and Mike jump from the wreck and run into a nearby into a nearby rail railroad yard. Get going! We lost them. Well, well we well, lost. Well, them. Well, uh, we'll, we'll check, we'll, we'll check, we'll check for fingerprints on that cab. Numerous other robbers and numerous other robberies and beatings follow. This then, then the crime wave stops. Chief Winston, um, carries on the investigation alone. The trail finally leads to a saloon. You, uh, yeah, I heard I heard two two guys cooking up something here that night. One was called uh, Gooseneck. Thanks, Gooseneck. Well, that's some um, lead, anyhow. Yeah, we'll drop that name around. Weeks go by without yielding a clue. Then one day a phone call comes through to headquarters. There's a guy working with me called Gooseneck. He's new with, with Acme Construction. Winston appro uh, approaches the man the following day. You're under arrest for murder and robbery. You ain't got a thing on me, copper. All right, I'll I'll talk. I was there, but Buck did all the all the shooting. Buck Buck Moran's the guy you want. Okay, we'll pick him up and talk to you later. Winston and his men um surround Buck's house. You men cover the back. Tony and I will go up the front way. Buck hears the tramp of feet on the stairs. Cops! Okay, now. I'm just trying to see. Um, uh, igno ignoring, ignoring the. Oh, okay. I think it's I, I think first. Down, down and then and then over. Oh, uh, there there he is, Chief. Stop, Morin, or we'll shoot. Ignoring the the command, Buck turns to escape, 
as Winston fires. Uh, Elf says, I'll pay a dollar for proof of the first use of Acme in comics. Well, I don't think this is uh, the spot because I think I've read Acme before in a couple of uh, comics that we've read or heard read on a Friday night. What about you, uh, Mike? Um, what's he talking about? Acme. I, I, I again. The, I the name know. Acme. On the last uh, page, they mention Acme, and you know, in a lot of uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons, especially with uh, uh, Road Runner and uh, Coyote, he's getting uh, most of his stuff from Acme. You know. Yeah, I mean Acme. So, I think around this, around you know, during the golden age of co of comics and, and cartoons here. I think Acme was just used as kind of like um, a catch-all for like some like some like major like production uh, company. Yeah, I mean you know, you 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 basically send off or something. You you know, get something from a from magazine ad and then it it gets delivered. You know, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. So he's just saying he paid a dollar for proof of the first use of it in comics. Uh, just because it was said, uh, like I said, I don't think this was the first use, obviously. Uh, yeah. I think we've read it a couple times before somebody ordering from Acme or whatever in yeah. a comic. What, um, anyways, Winston's shot, Winston shot does not bring the fugitive down. Buck darts for the rear fire escape. Um, where, um, we're uh where one of the police guard picks him picks him out. Yeah. Now I've got to say something. I'm not sh it's probably supposed to be on that building there, or it's supposed to be a sign or something. But it's supposed to be a sign coming off that building that's behind it. <laughs> that that cross does not look if it's supposed to be on the building like flat, that does not look flat. Huh. I think something wacky happened with that cross, I'm wondering why it's there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's not even supposed to be a cross, it just simply. Just looks like a cross, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it could be that too, easy enough. It just looks so out of place. Yeah. Mor Moran hasn't got a chance. Um, hasn't got a chance, Chief. That steel bullet went clear through through him. Uh, Alex thinks it's a power pole line. I, I I don't think it is personally, but it doesn't look quite it's, tall enough to be. Well, well actually, uh, actually, well, I, I do see I do see red lines coming because it does look. I, it does kind of look like there's a couple wires coming off of it. Yeah, yeah. I I just think it it, it doesn't look right. You know, mm -hmm. it looks just looks off. Even as a hydropole, as one might call it. <laughs> Christian seeing crosses everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I saw them after. It's hard, unless you actually focus for a second, you don't necessarily see them right away, which is what happened with me when I focused a little bit more. Just before you, or just after you said about the power lines, I saw it. All right. But, I think you're both characters in this panel, Rick. Yeah. You better talk. Morin, you're through. You're wrong. You shot the wrong guy, Kappa. Vern is, is a hophead. I think it means hothead. Well, no, sure hop, it could be hophead. It, it could, it, maybe that was a term they used back then. <laughs> you know, but how, however, to the amazement of doctors and police, Buck gets well. Meanwhile, the police search for Mike Bates, Buck's um, partner, on the second night of horror. Oh yeah, I was I was Mike there. That's right. Yeah, I saw I saw Buck that that night. He was with Mike P, Mike um, Bates. Um, now can I go? I don't even think that was Mike. But <laughs> yeah, I don't. Chief Winston finds Mike Bates 
in a pool room hangout. Bates, you're under arrest, and the charge is murder. I ain't. Early in 1927, the three are given their sentence, uh, sentences. So this is happening even before 1940, I guess. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, this is when they come out. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Oh, I was going to say, obviously, this is about a true story. I thought so with the way they were telling it. There wasn't the pizzazz that you would normally yeah. true, expect for true uh, crime stories, right? I think that's yeah. kind of, yeah. Frank Vern and Mike Bates, you are sentenced to life terms in the state prison. Buck Moran, you must pay the supreme penalty for your hideous crime, death. One year later, Buck meets the meets the murderer's fate on the gallows. And look how look how they put that there. They didn't, you know, they show him more in shadow there. You see that, Rick? Yeah. They show him um, hanging you know, via a shadow, not an actual hanging, you know. Oh, uh I okay. I was taking it differently at first where in the Meet when it said the meet the murderer's fate on the gallows, they mean they don't mean murderers as in a plural murderer, they mean the possessive murderers, right? You know, mm -hmm. because there is an apostrophe there between the R and the S at the end. Hmm. Uh, Timothy's says um k okay, i'm not sure why uh and then he says what would he get for a hilarious crime i don't know <laughs> uh and elk says my parents thought the mafia controlled pool halls probably some they did but i wouldn't say all and then tim's maybe they did <laughs> and if you guys haven't already if you guys can of course like and share this thing see if we can get some more friendly people to engage that'd be appreciated also if anything here we talk about tonight grabs your attention feel free to comment and or ask questions and i'll try to answer the questions to the best of my ability or we'll try to answer the questions to the best of our ability so with that um i do know we've had some good chatter going on in the chat so um and i think that's the end of this particular story so yeah at the end so let's see what else we can find uh, Elk says, uh, the mafia could not find our tiny town on a map. <laughs> uh, Tim's like, better to run things from Alpha Proto's here and says, I just got here. I have no idea what's happening. Well, uh, we are reading comics from 1940. Uh, this, and it happens to be from the month of February, and we're focusing on the company of Dell. Uh, we read some uh, uh, Smile and Jack from uh, the Four Colors comic, and now we're in uh, uh, popular comics that they produce, and we just read, uh, what was the story name? Uh, Gangbusters, actually, was the Gangbusters. first one. Uh, they probably would be, this one would probably be in public domain, I would guess, yeah. Uh, Alpha. Yeah, this one is, the ones on this site are all public domain. We have read some that May not necessarily that may may or may not be considered public domain, but you know we usually most of the comics we're doing right now because we're we're still focusing in the golden age here are public domain because a lot of these companies no longer exist, you know. So um, and Alex uh, says probably in Hamilton they controlled some, possibly. I'm not sure how much. I've heard that the mafia was in Hamilton, where I came from, but I'm not sure how much so. And to me, if they, I think, answers us, Alpha Proto says most likely. All right, here we'll do Herky. Here it is Herky by Clyde Jones. Hi, Pop. Okay, so you do Pop. I'll I'll do the kid. Hi, Pop. What are you doing at home today? Oh, hello, son. You're just the fellow I wanted to see. I have, I have a little private matter to talk over with you. 
I want to get your opinion on a few things. Anything, anything to help out, Pop? Which would, which would you rather have, a baby brother or a baby sister? Gosh, Pop. This is kind of sudden. I mean, I never thought much about it. Babies must be good for something. Let me see. <laughs> uh, of course, we could we could use a good second baseman on the ball team. <laughs> but on the other hand, a sister could help mom around the house quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. I think some people would be having a fit over that. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there'd be a few people today if they saw that. That that, that would be the case. Uh, before we go on, Tim says beats the comics about sci-fi heroes. Uh, heroes had to kill zombie donkey donkeys. You know, ass blasters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alpha Proto says, it's cool knowing if you like any of these public domain comics, you can start making your own versions of the comics. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Timothy says, Pop, getting drunk and beating your son father. <laughs> oh, boy. Pop's uh, like, yeah, I read True Crime about Hamilton and alleged, alleged mafia families connected to Montreal and Buffalo. Uh, and Alpha's like, I miss good comedy comics. Archie has had that section of the market industry down for decades. Yes, they have. Um, although, albeit, uh, we, albeit we, even though we have started reading some of the early Archie comics, you know, Pep Comics, Zip Comics, Top Notch, but Archie is Archie's yet to his um, debut at the point where we're at right now in history in February 1940. Yeah. They had some yeah. interesting oh. heroes though, like like the wizard, like like um, the shield, you know. Yeah, uh, they they they've introduced their heroes at this point, uh, which most people don't know that they actually have is the heroes. You know, like I read Archie for years before I knew they actually had heroes. It wasn't until DC brought out a line called Impact Comics, taking some of their heroes and bringing them up to the modern age that I knew. Oh, Pop. Well, son, the condom broke and mistakes happened. <laughs> Good news, you get a sister. <laughs> oh, uh, Tim being funny there. Uh, but but to but to get right down but to get right down to brass tacks, um Pop, I think I'd rather have a a Shetland pony. Shetland pony. <laughs> Shetland pony. Gosh, maybe I spoke out of turn. <laughs> Meanwhile, old Doc Stork is prepared to make a hurried call. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, although this conversation is funny, um, the problem is that boy doesn't get to choose, and neither does the dad get to choose what is going to be you know, it's nice yeah. to dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think, I think, I think this was kind of one of those just kind of roundabout ways of telling, of trying to tell his young son there that his mo his mommy's pregnant and she's gonna and he's gonna get either a little brother or a little sister. <laughs> yeah, you know? but this might have been, you know, uh, these are more slice of life type comic as well so um <laughs> he's like meanwhile pops gets arrested at the stables with his pants down again <laughs> oh boy okay so anyways let's see now shark egan let's see oh here's another herky oh we got another herky yeah. Oh, we'll do this one. As I said, I wasn't going to try to do too many. Yeah, you know, we, we already did a few, like, drama ones. I was trying to just look for the more yeah. immediate ones here. Well, kiddo, what you waiting for? 
Go ahead, snatch it, or somebody else will. Now, honey, your mother said you couldn't have any more. Go on, don't pay any attention to that dame. Get the fudge before someone else does. You would you wouldn't want to disappoint your mother. Get the fudge. Just see how good it looks. No, no, it would it wouldn't be right. Thank, thank, thanks for leaving me a hunk of chocolate, sis. Oh, that was a little girl. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> That's his baby sister. <laughs> that we were talking about in the last one. Yeah. Uh, Elk says, once you get, once you're caught, once you're caught, once as a barnyard Romeo, you really may as well keep doing it. You're as humanly hated as possible. Well, and Tim, well, you know Florida. <laughs> Elf was like, oh, she was born. Interesting. They have continuity. <laughs> Well, these are also reprints. So these are reprints from earlier, like from the newspapers. You know, Herky is one of those comic that was initially done as a strip for a newspaper. And then, of course, in the, you know, even in the times even before this, you know, some of these strips were eventually brought into the comic books as well. They were reprinted in the comic books for material. But at this point now, they've kind of gone half and half where, Half of the book is now got the reprints of the comic strips, and then the other half is original material. So, come on, come, uh, come on, honey, let's get home before we we get wet. Now, don't be scared, sis. It's nothing but a little thunderstorm. Boom! And you're here, you're here. You're you're not afraid of a little thunderstorm, are you? Ah! Boom! Uh, Timothy says. Meanwhile, Pop spends some time in prison for the stables incident, where he <laughs> is constantly traded for six. I don't know about tips sometimes. Oh, okay. <coughs> oh, but anyways. Sometimes doing some of those voices and switching over like that can put a little strain on the on the tonsils and the throat. <laughs> yeah. I had a girl, sis. Get get real sore. That's the stuff, kid. Do something about it. So, so give a so giving the old sky some of its own medicine, huh? Just like that, eh? hey kiddo. Alpha says this is a cute story, and Timmy says the two kids are fresh from a lightning. Yeah, considering that I had. The last issue of Pot Long Long, they did was 40 because we're now doing every 10 issues. I should have realized that there would have been a bit of a changeover. The Hurricane Kids, this one sounds interesting. The Hurricane Kids. Uh, let's see, we're at an hour 28, so we might uh, just. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Rick. Oh, I was, gonna, I was just going to say we're at an hour 29, but he said it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll probably make this the last last feature we'll read. Um, the Hurricane Kids by Albert um, Hartjill and Will Eli. Now, Will Eli, I believe, is one of the pseudonyms that was used by Will Eisner, I believe. Um, Alan and Dave have been shipwrecked almost a year 
on a on a strange island um and and through a fleet group group through a group through, through, uh, through a freak through a on a on a strange island croup and through a freak the island uh through through through, uh, through a freak um play of nature prehistoric life still um exists on the island an earthquake has just taken place and um mala a stone age girl is believed dead. Her broken canoe was found on the banks of the river. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. Rick, what does that what does that scene they just described remind you of? Um, a little of Tarzan, a um, little Savage Land from things. There's um, Kong, even. You know, like King Kong. There's a few different uh, things. That you, are... you know what? You know what that opening monologue, that opening narration reminds me of? Gilligan's Island. No. Land okay. of the Lost. Oh, okay. You've seen Land of the Lost, right? Yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple back in the '70s. Marshall, I've seen a few. Right? I've seen a few. I've seen a few episodes of it. I remember it. I know what it is, but I haven't seen the whole series. Elva says, "Smart to give an overview of the story before things start." Yeah, especially when they've had it in other books before. If in case this is your first time picking up this book. All right. Um, I'll do the I'll do the redhead and the I guess the brown haired guy. You want to do the blonde guy, Rick? Okay. I hear ocean. If only our motor launch has weather. Well, if only our motor launch had weathered the storm. There, there she is. There she is. Look safe and sound to me. See, I'm glad. What would have we done if she had been smashed on the rocks? He's our only link with civilization. Uh, just up a touch. Oh, yeah, there we go. If it hadn't been for our luck finding the launch after the wreck, we, we'd we be savages now. We must be more careful in the future. Hmm. Boy, boy, she's uh, almost... Uh, full of of omway, well, omway elves. <laughs> um, omway elves. Few, few, few more rails full, and she'll be drunk. <laughs> sunk, sunk. You mean, uh, um, J, um, J, remember. Our boat is a lady. In, in, in a short while, the boat is ready, and they are um, chucking out of the shelter, or yeah, chucking out the shelter of the shelter um, of the cove. Meanwhile, far out at sea, carried by the turbulent floodwaters of the river, um, Maya has managed to save her life um, when her, her dugout overturned, but safe from drowning, a fate far worse seems to await her. Out of the depth of the ocean, a terrible creature um, rises, and then another sea serpents, prehistoric monsters. 
Look at that sea it's serpent true. right there, Rick. What do you think? Of, what do you think of that design of a sea serpent? Uh, it looks a little like nasty, uh, but you know, I think it's more snake. It's, uh, it's fairly typical, I would say, almost. I mean, but, sea serpent know, would be like uh, part of the snake family, a dragon family. Yeah, it's hard to say. You know, everybody has their own interpretation. Nowadays, especially, you know, when nobody's ever seen them. Although, yeah. you know, sailors would have seen them back in the past, but, you know, most yeah. people don't even believe that stuff, so that they yeah. might have seen them. Maya's breath stops as she faces um, the, cru the cruel eyes of the reptiles. But as the first um, servant is about to strike, the other, other, um, the other, afraid of being um, deformed of a um, daintly morsel, or deprived, I think that's deprived. Of a morsel, <laughs> yeah, uh, attacks its opponent. Wow! Look at that! Look and at that! Getting, yeah, and that's getting, getting a bite better out of, uh, out of the out of the sea serpent's neck. Yeah, that's getting a better uh, mor morsel. Yeah. Um. A terrific battle ensues before Mala's eyes. The huge reptiles are turning the sea into storm-whipped froth. Into a storm-whipped storm ripped froth. <laughs> In the far distance, Dave, at the helm of the launch, Notices the turmoil. What on earth is going on there? I'll hand me the field glass. <sighs> oh boy, we don't want to miss this. What a fight. Holy smokes, full steam ahead. I, I think yeah. you would want to <laughs> They run right in the danger there, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, that was a bright idea, right? Yeah, we we see a couple of monstrous sea serpents there, so let's let's go right into the middle of that battle. Yeah, that's yeah, that does not seem like a bright idea for you know like uh, a couple of reasons. Comic book logic, yeah. right, Rick? <laughs> comic book yeah, logic. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem good for two reasons. A, you might become a snack, or B, your boat might get overturned in the knocked over. And then you end up in the sea and, you know, possibly end up drowning, although I'm not sure how far they are from shore, so maybe they might make it to shore. But they could still end up as a snack for one of these uh, yeah. sea monsters. Yeah, so when when the boat reaches the the scene of the battle of the sea servants, it, um, the, the battle of the sea servants is still in full swing. And the water is tinted with the blood of the brutes and, and you see how they're how they're doing the blood in the water there yeah yeah i, I was gonna purple, say kind of a purplish pink color right there yeah I, I was gonna say what they would have been better off to say is oh i see the woman that they thought was dead oh let's go rescue her you know, that that would make more sense for them to go into this thing. But they're going to go over there and then find out that she's there alive. Yeah. Um. Gosh, look at the size of them. Watch out. Dave. Watch out, Dave. There's a there's a um, there's a floating tree. Um, leewards. See, uh, that was close. I had my eyes on those darn snakes. Look, something in tree. The 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 boat boat of girl. The boat of body. The boat of girl. Body of girl. Um. Why it? Why it's Maya? Jenny, boys, I'm backing up. Careful, the. Branches don't uh, foul the prop. <sighs> uh, hmm. 
she uh she moved she she isn't she isn't dead dave maya is is um is alive she just fainted maya's magic charm save her we found charm in broken canoe charm lead us here find maya She's coming to. Oh, where am I? Oh, 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 oh. Wait, oh. That's her. Oh, yeah. Oh, where am I? Oh, my Omu, Alan. Oh, Omu, Alan, Dave. Maya, you say we all here. Now, the uh, red, the is probably... I, I was just going to say something about that panel there. They missed coloring a little bit on her right where her arm is you should see uh part of her dress or her clothing colored in where it's white to separate from her arm her chest and her arm his arm her arm and her chest area it should have been colored in black there yeah. hmm. Gosh, those beasts have a one-track mind. They're still at it. Looks like the f finish for one of them. We better get away from them. We're too close for comfort. Hey, what's the matter? She stalled. She won't start. As the boat drifts closer to the fighting monsters, Alan and Omu fire desperate fire desperately at the reptiles while Dave tries to fix the motor. See kind of what you get for wandering into a into a battle between two two giant sea serpents. Right? Yeah, and yeah, and that's why I said, you know, it would have been great if they found her first, saw her through the, you know, the Telescope or, or not telescope? You know what I mean. I forget what it is. It telescope? No, it's not telescope. The, the thing with the you know you look through with one eye, and they would have seen her on the tree, and then oh we're going to go rescue her instead of oh yeah let's go let's go closer to this battle and just you know check out this mon these you know monster snakes you know fighting each other yeah. <laughs> What could be wrong with the stupid thing? What a time for it to fail! Skip the mo skip the motors and and grab a rifle, or we're or we're all sunk. They're um they're almost on top of us. Shouldn't it be it's almost on top since it's oh maybe they're both coming. I thought the one was done. I thought they said the one was done, <laughs> but apparently it's not. Suddenly, one one of the gigantic serpents throws a coil around the boat, and the boat almost sinks with the terrific weight. Keep firing, boys. I'll fix this with my little hatchet. <laughs> as suddenly as, as it began, the battle is over. With one mighty splash, the two monsters disappear below the below the surface. Yeah, I'd like to know what he was expecting to do with that hatchet. <laughs> Cause any real damage? Hmm. He would have he would have needed to chop quite a bit into those snakes to do any real damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gosh, I still don't believe it. Over, it's over. I bet they are keeping it up on the bottom of the ocean no no they are dead and so am i i want i want to go home what could be the matter with the motor 
Let me have a look. Adrift on the ocean, what will happen? Um, what will happen to them next? Don't miss the next big adventure of the Hurricane Kids. So there you go. Um, back then, probably somebody would say, I don't want to miss it. Me, I would say, yeah. As we said, it, you know, we're at hour 45 now, so as I said, we, that was going to be the last. Um, so, so how did you like the selections tonight, Rick? Uh, not too bad. Uh, you know, the, the crime story was a little dry, but, you know, it, it's expected, you know, especially being real life. Uh, they, I don't think they had gotten how to write real crime stories, you know, so it's just not as if you're just reading something dry, hmm. you know. Yeah. Um Definitely, uh, this last story, you know, it was a little better, obviously. A little bit of action, you know, of course, the plot holes we <laughs> found e very easily, but, you know, and then, of course, all, everything, all the funny stuff was, you know, funny, you know. And then it, it, it's nice how they had that continuity over the several pages or several stuff for the first story that we read for Smiling Jack. That would have been in a newspaper probably uh i would think for weeks probably a couple months that would have been kept up uh, mm -hmm. unless it was every day but somehow i'm thinking it was every saturday or something like that mm -hmm. yeah all right i'm just checking stuff here okay all right well with that um i hope everybody enjoyed the show today so before we, of course, wrap things up, we're going to do our This Day in Each History segment, which is when we take a look back at, you know, what, you know, some of the neat happenings that happened on this date. Um, so first off, we're going to head back to 1999, which was, of course, 25 years ago. And on this date, in, uh, um, by the way, um, so today being... Um, Friday, March 29th, 2024. We're going to take a look back at this day in Nietzsche history. History! So first off, I'm going to head back to 1999, 25 years ago today. As on this date back in 1999, the WWF held its Monday Night Raw event from the Continental Airlines Arena in... Um, in um new jersey in east weatherford new jersey now, of course since i found the, the cursor here of course now this was of course the night after wrestlemania that year so this is what happened on the show in the night after wrestlemania back in 1998 the main event saw x-pac defeat triple h who had china and shane mcmahon in his corner by a dq Jeff Jarrett and, uh, and Owen Hart um, uh, retained the WWF Tag Team Championships over the Legion of Doom of Hawk and Anim Animal and Hawk. Um, Goldust defeated Road Dog, Road Dog for the um, WWF Intercontinental Championship. Um, Hardcore Holly retained the um, Hardcore Championship over Dr. Death Steve Williams. Um, who was um, escorted to the ring by Jim Ross. And the night opened up with a women's tag match as Ivory and Tori defeated Jacqueline and Sable um, with Terry Runnels in their corner. So, um, so with that, let's get ready and move on to the next piece of Meech history here. As we move ahead to 2009, on this date in 2009, on this date in 2009, um, the Asreed anime Minami K. Okari completed its run on Japanese television on this date back in 2009. So 15 years ago today, as reads Minami K. Okari concluded its um, run on Japanese TV on this date back in um, 
back in um, 2009. Now, moving ahead to 2019, um, on this day in 2019, um, there was a fantasy period adventure film directed by Tim Burton for Disney, um, a reimagining of Walt Disney's 1941 animated feature film of the same name, Dumbo. So the modern version of Dumbo premiered on this And live day. action as well. What was that? It was live action, wasn't it? It was live action too, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, live action adaptation of the re and reimagining of 1941's um, Disney animated classic Dumbo there. Um, and that premiered on this date five years ago today. And then... Um, and now, um, finally, one year ago today in 2023. Oh, well, that was really close. Yeah. One year ago today, the 10th and final issue of Bloodstained Teeth from Image Comics went on sale on newsstands on this date one year ago today. It sold for $3.99 with 28 pages. So there we go, everybody. That, that's all we got for you tonight. I hope everybody enjoyed the show before we head out, of course. Uh, Rick, did you want to do an outro real quick? You know, um, share any links, promote anything? Yeah, uh, well, I'll just say, uh, yeah. Uh, first, I'll just say, I wonder what you would have to do to get bloodstained teeth. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Uh, but uh, I was just gonna say, do we really want? Do we really want to know that? Because something tells me it'd probably be something very nasty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, if you guys go up in the chat, I said put out two links earlier. One for uh, first time reaction video, which was me watching Alien Resurrection, and the second one for uh, the, probably the last uh, possible music for Snowdrift. I'm actually going to start getting on some, making some more uh, stuff, maybe for different characters. But anyways, yeah, just go check those out. And yeah, like and subscribe and all that to my two channels uh, if you're not subscribed to them. And of course, that's Pied Piper of Hamilton and Cross Comics. All right. So, so with that, um, I think everybody, um, anything else, Rick, before we, before we wrap up? No, no, that's, I'm good. All right. So with that, I thank everybody for being here tonight. I hope everybody enjoyed the show. I know some of the reading might have been a little choppy there, but you know, aside from that, I think hopefully everybody had fun as we look back on some of the stuff from Dell Comics. So with that, I thank everybody for being here. We'll be back here on Sunday with our panel show. Um, I'll send the link to you, Rick, as well as to Tim. You know, Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, so with that, I thank everybody for being here, and we'll see you all on. Sunday. Bye.